morning everyone. I've been ill for a couple of days, that isn't good, isn't it? So we haven't actually been back to this job. I had to can't tell the current client I couldn't come. So massive shout out to Milwaukee again today. We've got some new bits to try out. Look, look at that little beast. Look, we've got that one to try out, some saws, etc. We're gonna try them out. We've also got an active hive heating system to do today. So we've got the multi-room and we've got the and we've got the hive active heating. So that does the hot water and the central heating on one zone and then this is for the upstairs zone this is this is um to add the second zone and upstairs because they got a second zone basically we're gonna go and get james um we've got i've tried to get some bending springs have you tried to get bending springs lately for the right conduit it's a freaking nightmare so i'm hoping they're okay if not i'll have to buy i'll have to get a bit of um i've got heavy gauge i'll have to get a bit of um light gauge from the um from the garage um to be able to bend that if that's the wrong spring There we go. So you saw there, we just added a couple of sockets into a new build and um board was very nice, very clean. Again, twin and earth. And the, the, so the board is this side of the house. So it must run through the fabric of the building again. I assume that they've put metal plate on it. Um, and unearthed sockets and stuff. Yeah, it's just basic, isn't it? No fly leads on any of the sockets. Um, so that multi-gang switch was unearthed. Anyway, we're not moaning. We're gonna get on. We're gonna go and get a coffee. <laughs> I reckon James has had a lovely haircut. Look, how much you pay for that? 20 quid. 20? Yeah. I thought they'd do it for free. No. <laughs> right, we're going to, and then we're going to go and do a little hive install. All right, this is the programmer. We're, um, we're, we're, we're um, switched off here. We'll take that fuse out. This has killed the programmer, which we're going to put the hive active heating one on. We've then got this multi room, okay? He's got to come in this cupboard because we've located the valve. I've got mega flow tank. We located the valve that controls the upstairs um, radiators. So that one will go in the cupboard somewhere here. Luckily, I've just this is lovely. So we're going to take this off first and then mount the new, um, this one on there. I 100% prefer these to the nest. So we've got the back plate screwed and he fixes on the back box. Also, I've labeled my cables up. Um, I'm just going to put in the relevant connections now. Right, this is the old thermostat, remote thermostat cable, this is Dan Foss. So you've got our live neutrals, and then it's three and four, which is literally... Where'd you put the instructions, James? Oh, it's literally three and four, look, it's domestic hot water on and heating on. It's as simple as that. There is. That's the one we've been using, that one there. Easy peasy, now we've got to fit the um, one in the airing cupboard. Well, for some reason the client wants that there so he can see it, which is fair enough. Um, so I'm going to put a plasterboard box in there, drop a new, some new cables down, two free corners. It's going to come out here somewhere. I've then got to put some trunking on or something to get them into this um, box here so I can do the connections. So effectively we need on here a live and neutral. And then we need to take out the link from the old thermostat and then one a cable through and to here. It's fairly simple. It's fairly simple. Look, there we go. Live neutral in. Um, a lot of guys would use the earth connection. Obviously, it's an on sleeves, you can't use it as a live. It's not double insulated. It's only single insulated, so you can't use it. So I'll just put two cables in. Well, we're just doing that second uh, receiver. So these are the old cables. That was a permanent feed, went up to the thermostat upstairs. This was a switch back. 
which brings on the valve, okay? That brings on the valve I've worked out, which is what? We're zone one upstairs, zone two is down. That's the hot water. I'm gonna leave these in here, put them in a Wago, Vargo, whatever you wanna call them. Leave them in here, doesn't need to. We're not gonna rip anything out because it's always nice to have a cable going somewhere, isn't it? So we'll leave it, we'll mark it up that it's not used anymore. And then we'll just fit the thermostat, um, the new hive over the front because they have actually cut a box in for me, which is nice. So we can just screw that to the box, that will stay in there. And then our new receiver cables that come down here will come along, will come into here and literally it will just switch on the valve there. Just literally, it's a, like a switch. Imagine it as a switch, yeah? It's a wireless switch, basically. Well, we've got our little, um, got a new box cut in that. Obviously flag up the grey is the neutral and the black um, will just be the thermostat cable, yeah? I don't know if you have to link these or not, I ain't looked at the instructions yet, but sometimes you have to link the common to num like number one and it will switch on number two, or sometimes it does it internally within the panel. And luckily that cable came out with that pipe. We're just gonna put some Bundy 10 on here just to match this. Obviously I've only got black, but that's fine. Well, there's our new Copex, it comes in. We literally piggyback to feed, we piggyback to neutral. That's the old cables, thermostat cables that are now disconnected. And then we've got into there, there's our new cable, that'd be our switch line that comes from the new nest, uh, nest hive. Come up from the hive there, once the room stack clicks him on, it'll come down here and he opens that valve there, look. He opens that wire there that goes on the valve, which is number one, zone one. So it's fairly simple. It's quite nice with the copex, I suppose. Goes up the wall, sort of that far. Might just put a cable tie on there. James, have you got some in the van? Yeah. In a minute, in a minute, yeah. yeah. All right, so there's our upstairs multi-zone. That does upstairs, Rads, just controls the zone valve upstairs. So client's gonna do it off his phone, I think. So that's that one, he's gonna sit there, just covers the box. Jesus. That's a nice way to leave it, isn't it? Morning, morning, morning. Right, we're back. We've got to put some lights along this wall here. I've just noticed with these lights, actually. Yeah. Luckily, they've got the um, they've got the conduit spout, so we can mount them that way. We just have to change the diffuser around that. So obviously, it's like that. And we'll just change it to that, and then flip the diffuser. So we'll just make sure we can. They even give you a little um, pin prick hole there. Look. So dead center so we can drill through put the conduit through and then put a gland into it and then it's not actually the whole cover that comes off it's just that front bezel i've got these because they got a edison screw lamp so the client can um maintain these himself i didn't want to go down the route of led built in um, on these so we're going to get set up we're going to get some conduit in the van is an absolute tip james has got to do that at christmas for me so we've got some conduit we've got to bring so we're gonna have one light here somewhere, drop down, go low level, put a T box in, come up to the next light there, obviously back down around, pull a bend, probably put a coupler center, pull a bend. We've got to put a double socket here. This is where his TV is. So we're gonna put a double socket off of this. He's gonna plug his caravan into here. We're then gonna put another enclosure um, wired off the ring um, with an unswitched spur and then another enclosure with a kinetic switch in it. And then we've got two kinetic, um, we've got a receiver, we're going to, sorry, I always say that, it's a receiver, it's going in the box with a blank plate, I'll label it up, and then we've got one kinetic switch at the back door, one going at the front door, um, that's it basically, we're going to do that today, and then the client said he wants a light on this corner and one on the front of the house, so we've got to come off back entry out of a socket, fuse it down, three amps inside, and then we're going to just put two, two Collingwood floods actually, let's have a look at those, they're quite nice actually, pick those up from them. Um, CEF. Yeah. Good job I've not been eating in pies lately. There we go, look. The FL2s. FL02s. Look pretty nice. In in the shop you can plug them in, so we had a little play. And they got this 360 degree bracket, which I thought was cool. It'd be good for the corner so we can angle the light rather than it just being straight. So my hand like this. Yeah. 
Get to have a go with the new drill. Is it on? Is it on forward? Yeah. Press it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Straight in the centre. One more. Stop. Right, out. Let's have a look. That's it. And then just go back through the back a little bit. Take the burrs off. Go on. Go through one more. That's it. Yeah, perfect. How was the drill? Very good. Feels nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Top man. Right, well he gets on with that. What I've noticed obviously where the lamp is, obviously our conduit's gonna be that way now. The lamp should still illuminate because it's got the back in plate. It's obviously got the reflective pie dish. So it should still be okay to be fair. I'm gonna drill out the holes, put the four fixings in. The good thing is we can get all the lights up and then just do the tube work after. Well, I've got my light up. See that little pinprick there? I'll drill this out to 25. I'm going to put a um, bush coupler on there, plastic black. It'll run straight into there. I'll just use the 20 mil. I've just put the light up. There's the hole going through into the garden. So we get to, um, I'm not going to bother putting the protection through this wall because it is just an, it's just an outside wall to be fair. I've just used this little impact gun um, and I really like this. It's got a speed setting, which is really cool. Saves you mashing up um, when you're doing your double sockets up. Saves you um, smashing the face plates with them. Put it on one then, can't you? Right, that's what we're going for. Light. It's going to feed back entry. It comes out of the spout there. He drilled through the base and then he's landed into the into the light. Dropping the conduit to that level there. And then that should run all the way around to level with our power that we need. We're going to tee him off there, pick that one up. Probably going to just put one fixing in the middle there. Just one there, actually. On that, yeah. you can just about see the. Um, I might get a green laser, maybe in Milwaukee will send me one. Um, you, <laughs> you can just see the center spout there, um, landed in, and um, we obviously just want to put one fix in. It's probably going to be about there, I reckon, somewhere there. And we'll just mark that then. Just come back outside, I've just drilled my hole from inside, and look, it's spot on. James has gone and done all these for me, look. He's got me conduit on as well, top man. This looks quite nice. Uh, we've done these at about 500, but we've got to go with the, the mortar line because the bricks, obviously Cotswold is a bit uneven. So he's going to push me a one mil through here now. Um, we've got to get this bit here, and I did just pull a bend with this conduit and it's fantastic. Look, heavy gauge, yeah, with a proper spring. The skin's on the, the, the spring's obviously thinner because it fits in the pipe. Pull it round, we'll have a double socket, a unswitched spur, and then a box to suit the kinetic driver receiver, not a switch. Right, there's the socket. That's the power coming. There's a conduit from inside the house. As you can see, I've done him on a slight downward angle because water then won't, water can't go uphill basically, okay? It can't track uphill. As you see there, they're mortar lined slightly out. So I'll have to mount the socket in line. So hopefully it will cover, it'll pick that up. That'll probably end up in the bottom of the socket. And then I'll bring this line round and then put my accessories, um, Put my accessories, I don't know yet. Let's have a look. Where's the socket in that, mate? The socket and the switch and the box. Unpack, unpack that one for me. Let's have a look. Just want to see the knockout. I think it's just one knockout in the um in the side. I think. Have a look, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I got them. I got them out that. They're quite nice, actually. These click, not click. Knight's Bridge. I'm gonna to have to mount that so the spout lines up. So I'm hoping that I can cover that and then get that to line up, but we will see. So 
So there's our enclosure, conduit comes into the back for the double socket. I'm then gonna mount a single, which is gonna be an unswitched spur, three amp fuse, just to fuse down the kinetic. And they have got a fuse in them, but they don't accommodate 2.5. So obviously we need to wire one mil out of here. So that'll be there. Obviously I'm not gonna fit this all on the same wall. So then my other enclosure, which is gonna house the kinetic uh, receiver, is gonna go there, okay. Um, we will show it you when we've done it, obviously. Right, a double socket, unswitched spur, uh, kinetic receiver box is going to go on there. We'll change that socket for a blank plate. Obviously, I've got this height difference now, so I'm going to have to pull a nice little um, double set down and around. It's going to be interesting. Right, there we go. A pipe swoops around to the corner, comes around to... This is the kinetic receiver box. I had to pull a set and an internal bend round. Doesn't look too bad to be fair to say that the bins are going to be in front of it. Again, this is unswitched spur, double socket. We can now actually get some wiring done. We can pull a one mil this way, James. Yep. One mil, two core and earth, and then we will get second fix in. Yep. Yeah, sweet as. That went in all right, didn't it? It's just enough yeah. conduit in it. <laughs> just enough, yeah. So this is our, um, basically our ring final comes out here now. Um, Obviously, I'll have to put one of these in a set of probably ideal connectors in the back of that socket, extend the ring out here, and then take it back in. We're then spurring off the ring just to a switched, um, unswitched connection unit, and then we've got a bit of one mil, which will be fused down to three amp. He's gonna wire to the uh, receiver, and then literally that's gonna be our switch. Switch with the kinetic switches, one at the front door, one at the back door, and he runs that way. You see there, my little mistake. I had to move my socket over a bit because I wasn't gonna make this up again. So I just move the socket um, three inches that way. I will pull the raw plugs out. Um, we're now going to second fix. Um, we'll probably go to here, then we can insulation resistance test, and then we can connect away from there. Right, if anyone mentions about premature collapse on here, I'm going to delete my YouTube channel, all right? So if you mention down in the comments below, I will delete my YouTube channel. So I was going to put a blank plate on here. I've decided to leave it off. We're obviously mounting the kinetic receiver. Six amps, a 500 watt LED or 1100 watt other. So as in a halogen or whatever. Or you could put sodium. Um, because we need access to this button and the cables will be double insulation into the enclosure. It's gonna sit, it's gonna sit in there effectively. Like that, and then if something does go wrong, the client, all he's gotta do, cables in there all the client has then got to do obviously it will be dressed in is um open the front of that i quite like these look they got a good solid click on them that isn't very good chris <laughs> oh i'll undo that i'll get that actually sitting in the oh there we go in the gasket that's the trouble with these blocks they um it's not flat nothing's flat so you end up breaking out bits of rock to get it to sit straight but all you have to do is come in here, look, I'll mark it up kinetic receiver, probably not on there because it'll fall off, but maybe in here or something, and then it's just a three second press. So I'll leave these instructions inside there as well. Um, if you want, or we can have them. Um, James has just changed over the outlet because obviously it comes with a single socket and you just literally take off those four. We fit the click and that's just gonna fuse down the um, cable there because I've used a bit of one mil to three amps, yeah, to feed the kinetic receiver fairly simple um, it's a really good system once we get it set up we will show it you in action <laughs> right cable comes in that's our feed cable um, it does say it in there I've covered him up obviously uh, just, just like live and neutral in live and neutral out which is your switch they don't give you an earth connection so I've put a little wager in there they do fit um, that's our little wireless radio wire so you'll just sit in there and obviously then that little will be shut that's our waterproof enclosure for it and that will just switch the lights on and off. They give you a sticky pad for the back of that. So I've obviously stuck him in. Wherever it's gone. No, there it is, look. It's a little sticky pad. He just goes in the back of there. So that's in there. We can shut that for now until we have to program it up. Nice sockets. Um, and we're just going to fit this now. Then we're going to have some sandwiches, I think.
Right, right, my second fix, we can isolate at this switch spur, uh, unswitch spur, obviously. We're now gonna go and get a sandwich. I got one in the van. So we just got a second fix here. We will blob these fit-ins before we fit them. I'm not even, I don't think I'm gonna drill a plug hole. I'm not sure yet, might do. It'll save it filling up that conduit, won't it? I could just drill a little one at the bottom there. And then the same on this one. James has put me some box lids on. And we got to do is bang the other two lights on the side of, of this wall, basically, which are inside the garden. Seven, eight, and point five zero. Right. Oh, it's getting late. It's getting late. Right. We should now be able to hear mate, take that please. Right. Put this in pairing mode. And then we want to pair up both of these switches to these lights here. So three seconds. We've got fuse in. Fuse is in. the red light comes on see that red light and you should be able to click that and then click it on and we should have some lights on see some lights so got the kinetic switch here look lights off lights on and then what we do that one's paired we'll pair this one up hold the receiver till he flashes and then Lights off, lights on. And then here, you can see lights on, lights off, lights on, lights off. So he's now got 28,000 presses left now, so I'll use it a few times. Okay, so we're just gonna stick these to the wall for him. One, two, one, two. Let's get back in. Definitely not for us. Right, um, there's a double socket in a bedroom now. We're gonna put a, it's a bit of blob there, but it sounds clear there. So I'm gonna add an unswitched um, fuse connection unit here. We're then gonna drill out, probably to a stop end box, go along to a whisker, and then we're gonna put two floodlights off of here. Shouldn't be too bad. Well, it's nice to come to a job where you actually only gotta take the plasterboard off, then you can fit a 25 mil back box, look. <laughs> Right, there's our one mil cable that we've just adapted. I just chucked a load out because obviously I couldn't see it. Um, so what we need to do now is put a stop end to a whisker, flood, flood. And like I said, we've got the Collingwood so we can angle them. So it should be quite easy now. Right, there's our conduit. He's coming along, one saddle. I love these little push-ons. Gonna get that whisker there. Then we've got the two outlets. One will come to a light here, one will come, we'll have to probably clip him round a little bit and put the light round on this side here, but these drills have been fantastic today. We used, um, we've only had to charge these up once and use the batteries once, so they've been good. Tell you what, I like these lights. It's so easy, you just put three screws, three plugs, bolt him on, squash washer and a washer, and then you can pivot him to wherever you want, so. We'll get that set up in a minute and he's got three switchable settings so we're going to match the cool white with the cool white lamps that i put in those lights so james has gone to get some 223s i think they are 
yeah, two two threes, whatever they are, two two one, two two twos, with a free where you go levers. Got our glands um, again. Just screw those in, and then the the whisker gland just pops out. All we've got to do is put another light round here in a sec. That's an aerodrome, I think. Never going to build any houses there. Look. Oh, you know it's a bit late when you can test the lights. <laughs> oh, we're having a dance, James. <laughs> right, that one should come on. That one should come on. There we go. Ping, ping. I like the angled. Um, it looks a bit stupid, but it is practical with the angled, the column with angled, look. Um, double angled fittings, but it's giving us enough light, so. Right, there we go, everyone. That is very dark. Um... Sorry, it's very dark outro to the video. Um, we're all done. It is um, it's six o'clock. I dropped James off. I'm now home. Thanks, everyone, for joining me on another video. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks to Milwaukee. Big shout out to those guys for seeing potential in me and the channel. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. It really helps the channel. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you found it interesting, see you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.